the ultimate battle between the greatest warriors in all the world. Time is running out. GT. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of To Be Released. How's it going, Zen? I don't know how to do the intro Good. anymore because yeah, that's, that's an interesting. Uh, it's going good. Yeah, I feel like we should get a good frame of mind before we get into the scale. So yeah, good place. We just finished playing Legends, so that's a perfect time to talk about Dokkan. Yeah, absolutely. So the two dudes up here on the big boy scale, we're going to be, this is in essence the end of the Grand Tour until they do, I guess, a part three to this four year anniversary and release Shadow Dragons and Gogeta or something. Yeah, didn't they end up revealing that there was going to be a part three? No, not in so many words. It's just like, it just feels like there will be just because like the um, Omega Super whatever stage, he has a new animation. So ah. why make an animation for a boss you'll never lose when it's specifically GT related? So that's what I think. That makes sense. That makes sense to me. But these are the last two on the on the, the list for the Grand Tour. And then hopefully when we return, we'll get a really unit information because <laughs> there seems to be something going on. They've added a child, a child category for young boys and young girls. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so these last two units, let's talk about the first one. Uh, he's related to uh, the Omega stage. It is the, I don't know what the hell to call it. It's called, it's the whatever, the Spirit Bomb GT Goku. Okay, Universal Spirit. There you go, Universal Spirit Bomb Goku. Uh, Google Translate calls him Monkey King GT. And his title is The, Ag the Aggravation of All the Wishes. The ag Aggregate? The Aggregate of All Wishes. So, okay. Uh, so all wishes aggregated. Yes. And it, since he's easy aid, we will be doing the easy aid version. His leader skill is the uh, shadow, uh, shadow dragon category, three energy, HP attack and defense, 77% up. And then if they're intellectual or if they're intellectual, they get um, three key and then 50% to all stats. And his passive is uh, attack and defense, 12% up for every car, uh, for every care ball, an additional, Okay, so it's basically, um, what the fuck is it called? When they get the key balls, it's one of those type of passes. When it's a regular key ball, it's 12% attack and defense up. And when it's a rainbow one, it's attack 20% up. And then if there's an enemy of the uh, shadow dragons on the field, then he gets two key. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's about it. Uh... Yeah, so he's a, basically a free-to-play unit that came with the Shadow Dragons event. And his links are Combat Ethnic Saiyan, Grandson Clan, Veteran Warrior, Saiyan Pride, GT, Ready for War, and Rebirth. Not terrible. Yeah, not bad. Uh, he also has the special attack is maybe the best version of the Spirit Bomb we've gotten. Of the many Spirit Bomb Gokus we have, the only other one that compares They're is the funny. LR. Remember when we, but we got, got the first Spirit Bomb Goku and we were like, wow. Spirit Bomb. Yeah, it's kind of like the Spirit Bomb itself. <laughs> yeah. Really cool that first time, and then it just fizz Just keeps fizzling out, yeah. And, um... I don't know, this is the... It's the Spirit Bomb. There's only so many ways you can do the Spirit Bomb, which is something they've come to realize, I think. Goku just stands there, puts his hands up in the air... And then he throws a giant ass ball. <laughs> There's nothing more to it. But the way that they frame it is great because it always assumes that Goku is on the floor somewhere <laughs> and he rises yeah. up from the sky. <laughs> That's true. And then he also has like the Andre the Giant singlet in his arm, in his art. And he also starts as a TUR, so there's no need to doke on him into anything. It's just literally here's this unit, have this unit, enjoy this unit. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Yeah. Uh, they've been doing, they've been messing around with that kind of stuff for a while now, and it's good because you don't always need to Dokkan shit, especially if it's just gonna be a hassle at the end of the day. Yeah, because Dokkaning shit is not. Fun. No, it's not There's fun. No sense of accomplishment in it anymore. 
especially as someone who literally just finished doing uh, Say a Man and Say a Woman, it fucking sucks trying to get those medals. There's no fun in it. It's just something you oh, have to the, do. Oh, the LR from the friend banner? Yeah, the the one that you have to fucking go into Hero versus Heels, the Forgotten Event by Dokkan Standards, because it's so... At one point it served a purpose, but now it doesn't have a purpose because now you can just go back in time and get and go back to those stages. Uh, but yeah, in terms of this Goku, it's I think he's a there's not much to say about him. Honestly, he's just very good. Yeah, not really. the The art, the 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 animation is nice. So kind of when it gets down to it, when you went to this is like very quickly when he gets into the scale. Simply after suffering the GT effects, he's like he comes out into a one for me. It's nice that he's free to play. So that's a regular three. Then he gets minus two down to one because he's GT. Yeah, that's uh, put him two. Uh, I actually kind of I hate that they make. I kind of like the way GT Kid Goku looks. Yeah, like his like his appearance. Uh, I like the gi that they gave him. Yeah, he looks cool. So, There's nothing wrong with yeah, this. Yeah, so the art is okay. I, I think I'm in agreement that it's a three that then goes down to a one because he's a GT character. Yeah, yeah, that's basically how I feel about it. I do like the idea that it's um, it is Kid Goku. I like Kid Goku's design because it's such a small, short, stout boy. Even it, though they didn't make him as chubby as he should be. Yeah, the uh, chubby Pikachu version of original Kid Goku is the best version. <laughs> but this one is all right. In terms of Kid Goku looks. So he's up on the scale. And then the last one. And this will finally mean we've escaped the Grand Tour for now. Is. Let me find his goddamn name. Because he's so. It is Super Saiyan Trunks GT. Competit- uh, competent knowledge is his title. <laughs> and he is. He is very competent. He is. It's actually kind of funny. So chances are everyone has this unit because he is an SR and then he's on the ticket banner and this is his passive skill. Two key and then attack and defense 30% up. Oh, this is the this is the one that everybody pulled up. Yes, everyone has this fucking dude. Man, fuck this guy. Yeah, so here's the fucked up thing. I think this is the cruelest joke Dokkan has ever played. Because He's better than a lot of SSRs, but he doesn't get to have the 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 thing that's important, which is having the fucking orb system, the potential system. So he doesn't get to have fucking that. Rip. Yeah, that's a big rip. And if he does ever Dokkan, it's another rip because he gets the cheapest version of it because he started it as an SR. And Ugh. then... They put him on a featured ticket banner, which means that he, th- this Trunks, literally, I've pulled maybe 50 of him at this point. And there's no denying the fact that his passive is extremely good, but they put it on a unit that is, in essence, like, not how the game is run. It feels like they've kind of fucked up in releasing him. Yeah, it's weird. You know, you always think about Dokkan, oh, it sucks, you have to pull the rarest shit to be any good, and you want SRs to be good, but it's really punish the unit for being an SR. Yeah, this is one unit who literally, his biggest drawback is the fact that he's an SR. Because if he wasn't an SR, then he would be a fantastic, like, um, support unit to put on GT. But the way he is now, all he is is, like, um, he's a support unit until you can get a better support unit. (laughs) And again, it's one of those things of like he's good on paper because of that passive, but then I don't understand why he made him an SR. This is not like any other game where like, oh, lower level uh, dudes have a chance. No. SSRs have a chance because they have a potential system and that one day maybe they'll Dokkan. And SRs have that too, but if they don't have it right away, then it's kind of like, I don't understand why this card was made to be an SR. If this was a featured SSR on the ticket banner that was exclusive to the ticket banner, I could always say, like, it's shitty that he's exclusive to the ticket banner, but he's also really good. So at least there's something worthwhile to get in the ticket banner that is not an accidental LR. Right. But as Yeah, that sucks. 
But as he stands, he's just that guy who shows up in your ticket summons and you go, yeah, great, I got four of this fucking guy and then another random ass SR. I literally, I counted how many that I have from him because I played for the anniversary because everyone plays Dokkan over the anniversary. Yes. Uh, I have 45. Yeah, 45 of this guy. Uh Uh-huh. I have 40 fucking five. And yeah, I don't know. If the day ever comes where he Dokkans, he's going to be a great unit. But as it stands now, he is a good passive in a very unfortunate body. <laughs> like, uh... <laughs> like, uh, Dokkan is, like, it's too late. You can't make SRs and R's good anymore. It's the, the, it's over. You have to give up on that. <laughs> you, technically, I thought they gave up on that a long time ago, but apparently they have not. <laughs> no, not yet. Yeah, no, not yet. But again, if you're starting out, I guess he's really good for that essence either. But for someone who's like this far deep, it's hard to look at him and go like, I don't understand why you did this. (laughs) Everything about him is confusing because you can't use him on Battlefield or anything. You can't use... There's literal... That really sucks. There's literal modes where it's like, oh, it'd be great to have a support here, but also you can't bring an SR. And also... This is Super Battle Road, so he gets shit on if he gets hit once. God, that really... Yeah. Also, so, he's GT Trunk, so he looks like a fucking dweeb. He does look like a dweeb. He is running a corporation, though, which is funny. I would pick on that kid if I saw him. I don't understand how... Um, so a lot of people will complain about the fact that um, Super... Though, no, the kid Trunks is an asshole... When Future Trunks was so nice. Here's what I don't understand. How did that shithead kid turn into um, GT Trunks? Which is a very nice kid. <laughs> like, Yeah, it, that's true. Yeah, Kid Trunks is like a big douche. Yeah, it, it he does. And I do like uh, GT Trunks' personality better because it does remind me of Future Trunks. But without that like idea of like, okay, so when did he stop? being a shitty kid it feels yeah, like when did he grow up yeah when yeah. did he grow up it just doesn't make any sense to me i think that's the same reason i had a problem with like goten because for some reason goten turned into like a, a weird casanova type of character who was into yeah he girls. was like a fucking ladies man <laughs> like what the- when growing up he was like uh almost the same version as like, he's the same he's like he went he was like uh the closest thing to getting a kid goku too because he was a yeah, slightly smarter kid goku because Kid Goku was born in the Hicks, so he doesn't really understand how anything works. Like, no one will ever compare to how stupid Kid Goku is because he doesn't know any better. Like, uh, uh, Kid uh, Kid Goku didn't know how a girl looked like. He didn't understand that girls didn't have balls for a good minute at a time. So, yeah. I, yeah, GT Trunks. So, how do you feel about him at this point? Like, uh, um, I mean, I like him. He's good, and it's nice that there's... Um, but it does suck that Dokkan punishes cards for not... Like, in Legends... I, I don't want to be that guy that's a bad comparison, but Legends is... Kind, yeah. Is, um, it's more beneficial to be an extreme to level up. Like, you can pull them through the, the system easier like take less zenny and stuff uh, so it just seems weird to be like oh you got an f and oh he's really good fuck you, <laughs> you yeah shit. it doesn't make any sense the only time it made sense is if, if they brought out an event that was limited by the cost of the team but that does that kind of event doesn't exist right now so yeah they haven't done one of those in a long time no they haven't done just this fucking super strike yeah, that was yeah, that was about it. And then eventually they got rid of that because they realized this is annoying. Yeah, it's boring and unfun. Yeah. So I don't know. But the it's the part where he's a good unit that feels like he does. It feels like this is one of the few cards that is gonna. I almost feel like getting away his GT uh, negative because it feels like Dokkan has already fucked him over. <laughs> So it's just unfair to punish him more. 
yeah, he's... I don't think there's anything quite as bad as releasing a good unit and then him not being the, not having the, like, missing the key component and then realizing that if they did decide to give it to him later, he would still be hassled by the fact that he didn't start that way. That's fair. Yeah. I think I'm going to give him a two out of five. Yeah, that's what I feel too. Two out of five. He's one of those, like, I don't know if, yeah. It, it's a it's a mind it's a mind bender trying to think about him. So let's do a quick recap. Uh, we got Trunks coming in at two out of five, and then Goku was three out of five. Then GT effect knocks him down to one out of five. And those are yeah, that's a shame because he did actually get ranked higher than Trunks. But Trunks is immune to the GT effect by nature of sucking ass. Yeah, yeah. The Dokkan has already done our job for us. <laughs> It's uh, us doing uh, us giving a negative on the scale does not hurt him in the long run. What Dokkan did to him hurts him in the long run. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, okay then. Let's move on to questions now. If you this is going to be a very uh quick or fast episode, and the reason is is I've been very busy with work, but I still wanted to get this episode out for you guys. Uh. But also, I'm just so fucking tired, dude. <laughs> it's like, uh, I'm not getting the I most sleep. So I came home like, yeah, yeah I'm going to record a nice video today. I fucking passed out for like four. <laughs> yeah, that happens. That happens. All right, let's see. Let me find. Let me first quick, because someone asked us a question on YouTube, and I want to get that one up before the some of the other ones, because I think it's actually a very interesting question. So let me see. Okay. First question comes in. Again, thank you everyone who brings us a question. First question comes in from Red Shadow. Quick question. But is there... Oh, wait, no. That's the wrong question. Because that person was asking <laughs> if there's going to be a big boy scale for Legends, and the answer is yes. Yes, Correct. it is. Go look at it on my channel. Yeah. Legends uh, Legends Roadwork, now on uh, Zen's channel. Check it out. Uh, you'll get all the great facts about EX Khalifa's art. <laughs> That is that is the theme of our latest episode. Boy, is that a good one. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. So check it out. That is uh Yeah, it it's the most fitting thing. And also Zen gets to be the host. So you get to hear him with good audio and me with bad audio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a new experience for a lot of people. Yeah. That was the very first comment we got on Legends Roadwork. It was like, "Wow, it's like uh to be released, but but you can hear Zen. I like the fact that when you were trying to say that, you cut out. <laughs> so <laughs> It's great. Here's the other question that I actually have. This is another one from YouTube. Thank you for the question, Red Shadow. It comes from, and man, some YouTube names are great. XXLinus56XX asked, my question is to you and Zen for next uh, to be oh, released. Oh, that's the guy who asked for the red... Vegeta on the big boy scale. Oh, Same nice. guy. I like this. There you go. It's a crossover. And then his question is, do y'all take into account the viability of a unit for putting it on big boy scale for Easy A's, Super Battle Road, and Dokkan Battlefield? So this is kind of asking a question of what do we think so about... What's our, what's our logistics? Yeah. And I feel like this is a good time to say, like, when it comes up... Like, for example, with the Trunks thing... The reason I said that was because it literally just came into my mind. Uh, for a lot of other units, I'm usually not thinking about those kinds of modes because, because that's the kind of Dokkan player I, I am. So that's why when, for example, we have a... Uh, I feel like a lot of times the scale is suited to the person putting the person up on the unit up on the scale. That's why right. the criteria I have is different from the one Zen has. And then the ultimate showing of this is the showing of D free who showed up and was immediately like, Oh, so the, his viability on super battle road is this, the Dokkan battlefield. He can do that. You can do the side teams. We never thought of that shit. Cause we don't think of that shit. Yeah. Yeah. I, my main criteria is how good the art is and how much I like the yeah, that is a big factor, and is the and for me as a um, 
someone who plays Dokkan but wants to use the units I want, the more the unit lets me use units I like, that also affects them. That's why something like Baby, who I don't like, I can recognize that he has a good passive, but he also is the Aureli lead. So that's important for someone like me, and I feel like that's what's kind of in- great about the big boy scale is that uh, this is a personal thing at this point, but a lot of the times when people are arguing about Dokkan, I feel like they get lost in the fact that like, and this is, again, this is, if they're arguing with someone about this and that's the way they like to play the game, all the power to them. I think that's perfectly fine. But for someone like me, um, I like to look at something besides just like how... Pat- well, I mean, every show in existence be like, like oh well this character is really good at that like every every single person who's ever played this game and has some kind of show has a fucking tier list yeah. you don't need a tier list you don't need a tier list for that what i think we get is that i feel like the people who watch this are smart enough to know like this is how good this unit actually is and at that point it turns into like um do you really want to hear me and Zen go deep about like here's the mechanics. Let me tell you, we did that. That was called Modcast, and eventually that burned us out because looking at the yeah, logistics, it was exhausting. It was exhausting, and and at a certain point it became unfun because at a certain point we started to go deeper into like I don't understand the fucking business of this. Why the fuck are they doing this? And a lot of people will say like some of the current stuff has been really negative. But I also feel like it's positive because we um, celebrate the game in a very different way, in a way that isn't like um, just constantly like if we're we're like the do the closest we got to doom and gloom was when someone asked us when do we think Dokkan is ending, and that was the serious question of like that was us in serious mode going, <laughs> well here's the actual logistics of it and you know gotcha games and all, all this and that's fine to have every once in a while but having that every other episode that gets exhausting <laughs> yeah i think i think the big boy scale is it's certainly valuable i don't really think i, I would argue that's not really ever what it was for no the it's ma- for it's for celebrating dokkan and having fun yeah and the and the the good thing is is that a lot of things that would happen in the past is that people would go like, and it's shitty because I remember doing this back when I used to do something for the sub that was called um, best of the rest, which was taking all the units nobody talked about and then grading them on how useful they were, but it didn't matter because all of them sucked. But the second I started going into units like, oh, okay, Gohan, the best Gohans, I had to go into like the ultimate Gohan thing. And I was like, okay, currently as of this, this is what I feel. And then um, some dude literally was like literally start, trying to start shit. And I was like, oh, you think that? Huh. And I was like, dude, did you not read the part where I talked about – It's Let's like, let us have a red fight. Yeah, let's have and and then my entire thing was him was like, no, I'm gonna be. I gave him my reasoning behind it, and then he went like, yeah, lol, yeah, this, 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 and I was like, all right, you got it, buddy. And I literally went clowning on him immediately, and he was like disarmed and went like, wait, what? Like <laughs> I was like immediately going like, yeah, I agree with you. Fuck this. And he was like, uh, what? And then the the conversation ended because I don't care about that. Yeah, it's just it's it's like. Dokkan can certainly have depth to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would argue it has less depth now than it probably ever has. But yeah. it, well, maybe not ever has, but less now than it did in the past. Um, but like to, I, it's just not fun to approach it from a tactical number crunching standpoint every week. Yeah, and that's again us kind of thing. And when we have dudes like uh d on who like d loves that kind of shit and if he wants to talk yeah, about and more power to him yeah that's, it... that's do what you like about the game and if he's on here then we will let him gladly say like yeah hit is great this 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 and that and then we will come in and go like yeah but it's hit and then we will strike yeah, him down his head looks like a penis <laughs> yeah they will say his head looks like a penis but then you also get the double thing of like yeah krillin's up on this what do you feel d and he goes fucking t- 10 <laughs> double the scale yeah yeah exactly, exactly. That's, that's what it's kind of felt like the the closest thing i can think of and this is kind of this was always in the back of my mind and was one of the inspirations for when i pitched it is there's a feature on giant bomb which is uh literally about 
taking a uh, fighting games and then trying to put it into a list but then the fighting games they're playing are not the games that are you would expect to be on a fighting game tier list so for a good while like the number one game was just like uh the, for a while there terrace kasi was in the top 10 because they only played 10 games so it was <laughs> and the great thing is is that now fighting game people are looking are finding the list and going like what the fuck is this list <laughs> what are you doing so caliber is like way too low and it's like well that's not what that list is for it's dudes literally playing a fighting game for this set amount of time then going uh science says that this is how i feel about this game so it's up here fuck you and i feel that's kind of what big boy scale is into a not as crazy amount of death because they also still look into like fighting game mechanics and stuff but yeah think of it like that it's it's fun and as long as we have fun i feel like that's that shows and that is lets us be able to um talk about stuff because i definitely know for a very long time it was hard to find anything fun in dokkan it was just a struggle to find anything like to talk about because here's this game that constantly fucks me over let's talk about how this new unit and now we can still do that i still get fucked over but now it's in a more jovial sense (laughs) And yeah, so thank you for the question. That was a lot of deep dive for a YouTube question, by the way. Yeah, yeah, that was that was quite a bit, but it's okay. Yeah. So thank us again. So remember, you can leave questions up on uh, YouTube, and we will answer it. And now, of course, here's the Twitter questions. Um, this one comes from Toaster of Fun. Have you guys fully embraced the Grand Tour? Um, no. Yeah the the song yes <laughs> maybe <laughs> the, the the rap song which is what he's talking about step up to the grand tour uh the unofficial theme of the gt era that we are currently in as long as dokkan keeps releasing gt units that is true uh but still no, <laughs> no. absolutely not no if i was fully embraced that's when i start making excuses for gt which I have been making excuses for GT, but I still end up with, but it's shitty. Uh, this one comes from Most Creative Name, and he asks, Am I too late again? Darn it, I'm getting closer every week. Well, I'm just anyway. So is the Impressive Ninja Skills email like not going to be a thing anymore? I had sent questions there a while ago. And that comes from Most Creative Name. Um, so here's the thing. Every time I tried to ask people to send the, an email, they never fucking did. It literally, I had to drag people to send an email in. And I feel now, just send, like, when I ask for it, send me a message on Twitter. Or just literally leave a comment question and we'll answer it. I feel it's just easier now. Yeah, it's, it's easier that way. Yeah, it's just easier that way. And especially with um, my Less time, messy. Less messy. And a lot of times the emails made it so that people... <laughs> left really long questions and also like three questions in one so yeah it was like actual letters yes it well it was which i appreciated too because it did leave some people going like hey this is me this is like hey what's up i love your stuff i love that you do this it really helps me and i like getting comments like that but oh for sure yeah if you if you feel that way always feel free to drop a comment on youtube and i'll i'll literally read all those comments so it sometimes i answer back <laughs> the only time i don't answer back is when i don't know how to respond yeah i'll get those every now and again where someone will say something and i will be like i have no idea what to say to this so i'll just drop like a crying emoji yes exactly oh, i'm losing my voice i'm slowly dying as we go on <laughs> but I hope that answers your question. Thank you for the question. Also, the answer is you'll know when it's too late because I will literally throw up a tweet saying it just got recorded. No more questions. (laughs) (laughs) This next question comes from the Camden filler hashtag uh, hashtag uh, Sobble squad. And also they have a B in their name. So, you know, they're in deep. Just all forms of deep. (laughs) Uh, And the uh, Sobble transformation card when? I don't think Dokkan deserves Sobble. No, Dokkan hasn't earned Sobble. No. I also feel that... a lot that goes into being worth Sobble. Dokkan is... Not that level yet. If there was a crossover with Pokemon, it still would probably not get Sobble. It would get, like, two cannon or something. Yeah, something... Garbodor. Oh, but a Garbodor card, though? (laughs) 
uh, uh, its category is trash. It is just filled with a bunch of <laughs> all the all the Dokkan devs just shitting on units. So it has every single Dragon Ball unit in there. Uh, all the units they don't like are in there. Yep. Uh, thank you for the question. Next question comes from Big Bunny, and he says, "Will we get a Dokkan version of B Gang uh, with a V uh, with a B Gang video?" Uh, I can answer this one. Yes. But a certain <laughs> unit has to be released first. You're is gonna... it LRB Pan? No, because LRB Pan is out, and I have her. So oh. I have her in the wings, pun. But I'm also waiting for um, LR Aurelian Goku, which will then, if you're if you're, uh... if you're wondering, like, oh man, where's the actual Dokkan like gameplay? It's coming because something big is coming. Something that I've been preparing for since. Aureli was first released, and then I ended up not doing because I was bad at solo videos at the time. But I'm slightly more confident now. So the perfect storm. Yes. So prepare for the giant storm that will be eventually coming. And I mean, like, if I if I get my way, you will get a Dokkan video a day until the feature is done. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Yes. Uh, just wait for it. Wait, wait for the wait for the video. Wait for the twelve. <laughs> Look out for Yes, you will get the you will get your you'll get your B gang. Uh thank you for the question, Big Bunny. Uh, I guess Big Bunny. I don't know. Big Bunny. I'll go with Big Bunny. Next question comes from Snake. Snake, the uh the man with all the knowledge of Yu-Gi-Oh the Sacred Cards, asks if you could improve the Grand Tour in one way that doesn't involve throwing everything away then what would you do first? And he means show, not Dokkan stuff, because I would say the Dokkan stuff has been pretty great <laughs> as far as GT is goes. <laughs> uh, Goku, like the... Some way to improve GT. That assumes that it's just one thing and then the rest of the show stays the same way. I would say that Goku could not go Super Saiyan when he was in his kid form at all. So you would never get Super Saiyan 1, Kid Goku, Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3, or Super Saiyan 4. And so it would be literally a back-to-basic start. Because I feel like that was what was the eventual problem with GT, is that the second, like, the first fight happened, Goku just went Super Saiyan, and you were like, this was a waste of time. This man could literally beat this alien, and he chose not to for four episodes. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That's a personal uh, thing for, for me. me. It's putting that fan song in every... <laughs> yeah. So not even, like, the good quality version of the Grand Tour, just, like, the opening is now that uh, fan video. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible fan video. Even, the like, the animation, too. Like, not just the... Uh, not just the music, but also the video. Oh, it's so good. And so, uh, it would, would it always end the same way with them walking off the green screen? <laughs> Uh huh. Uh-huh. And then GT starts. But, and for some reason, it's uh, Android 17 fighting future Gohan, which doesn't make any sense because he, uh, you know what? Will we've already discussed at length that video, that fan video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is uh, one of the finest things to come out okay. ever. Yes. It is. I'm glad that Zenrot somehow remembered it and brought it back into our conscious. Check, you should check out the the modcast in which we watch it live and the video plays. It's called Mystical Adventure Theater. Check it out. Thank you for the question, Snake. Hope that helps. Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Johan asked, "Is Int Goku Black good because of the B outfit?" And he then he links me a picture of uh, Goku Black Rose. On Zumasu's finger in a fucking bee costume. I saw that picture. That's, that's ador- a good picture. That's adorable as fuck. I wish there was a bee rose in Doka. Uh, yes. That is 100% a quality pick. Uh, if Johan keeps sending us pics of Goku Black, we might have to start doing the Goku Black. Uh, <laughs> the Goku Black, how adorable is this Goku Black picture? I'm going to give this... <laughs> adorable goku black picture contest yes the adorable goku black (laughs) contest right now that one's getting a five out of five from me it's adorable there's so much things of like i'm wondering why the fuck did someone draw this and uh, the answer is because they could aka 
Uh, say that again. I'm sorry. I said because they could, aka the finest reason possible. Yes, the finest reason possible. Thank you for the. Qu- That's not even a question. It was more of a statement. Oh, no, it was half a question. But yes, he is good, and Goku Black is good because of that card. <laughs> we will. Uh... <laughs> Uh, next question comes from Nighthawk, and then he has a face of kind of like, I'm very tired. And he asks, who are your favorite villains from each of the Dragon Ball anime series? DB, DBZ, DBGT, and DBS. Uh, I'll go first, because I saw this question first, and I'll give you a little bit more time for DB. Wait, I actually... Read me that again. Favorite from each series, is that right? Yeah, so that's DB, DBZ, DBGT, and DBS. The four animes, basically. Got it. Got it. Uh, for DB, I've been... It has to be Demon King Piccolo because he just, in terms of pure impact, he was the coolest. But I have been thinking a lot about how awesome it was when Mercenary Tao first debuted and he fucking stuck out his tongue and killed General Blue. Yeah, that was pretty fucking cool. And he fucking throws a giant piece of slab to go anywhere. I think Mercenary Tao has such a cool debut and then turns into such a wimp that it's unfortunate that that happened. But he's technically the first person to beat Goku because Goku wasn't suffering from hunger. He was the first person to actually beat Goku legit, so... Uh, but still, I'll, I'll give it to Demon King Piccolo just because of that ending. Like, he's good from beginning to end. And then he spits out a baby right before he dies. That's amazing. Uh, for DBZ... Also true. Yeah. Uh, for DBZ, that one's slightly tougher just because I don't really... I don't really think I... No, it is. It's it's Boo. I love Majin Boo. good when he first debuts and is like his giant asshole and he's like... Fat ah. Boo? Yeah, Fat Boo when he's like, hello, blind kid, I got you milk. Boo, do good. And then Boo flies away and it's like, yeah, that's your dumbass final villain right there. <laughs> and then he gets saved because Hercule... For the first time ever, Boo is the only villain that Goku is not the reason why he turns. Goku is the catalyst because he goes like, hey, how come you're listening to Bobby? He's kind of an asshole. And then Boo goes, hmm, you right. And he eventually <laughs> kills Bobby. That's true also. And then eventually Hercules like, what if I accidentally became friends with him? And the day is saved. If it wasn't for a bunch of assholes shooting his dog, Majin Boo, there would be no reason for Gotenks. I mean, no reason for Ultimate Gohan or anything else. <laughs> I think Boo, uh, Hercule accidentally friend is one of the best. Yes, it is. It is so unexpected because it breaks the formula of DBZ at that point. Because at that point, Hercule is just some asshole. Who well, is... yeah, the whole joke with Cell is showing up, stealing, and then he ends up actually pulling through in Boo. Yeah. Hercule is some of his finest character work near the end of Z, and I understand a lot of people don't like the Boo arc overall, but I really do like the Majin Boo stuff. And in terms of villains, he's my kind of villain, because he was also very silly. Uh, what do you feel, Zen? Oh, wait, I forgot GT. Um... GT, it's lewd because of his he's an asshole. And then DBS, <laughs> uh, I didn't watch enough, but I'll say it really for that one episode, because she beat the shit out of Vegeta. <laughs> <laughs> so she okay, comes. fair. Uh, let's see. For the original Dragon Ball, I will probably also say Demon King Piccolo. Although, my heart for Pilaf. Yep, Pilaf is um, good. For Dragon Ball Z, probably Frieza. Um, I don't know, maybe Vegeta when he first shows up. He's a real asshole when he first shows up on Earth. It's pretty great. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I'm going to say villain Vegeta more than Frieza. Um, Frieza does Dragon eat that Ball crap, Dragon Ball GT, though. God, the writer, is that fair? <laughs> the writers of GT, sure, that's Yeah, fair. just the people who design GT, that's the biggest villain of GT. And then for Super, uh, I feel like the correct answer is Goku Black, but I think I'm going to go with Jiren. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, is there a specific why reason why? I feel like a lot of people in the aftermath have been like, oh, fuck Jiren, not a character. Uh... Uh, it's, it's just because it's cool to, like, pretend that Dragon Ball is this, you know, whoa, Goku, crazy character, but, like, actually he's not at all, and it's just that by Dragon Ball being a Knight Templar is, like, 
impressive writing. All villains are just like, fuck you, bro. I'm going to... So people overplay Goku Black a lot. Just like Jiren. Jiren's like... He brought back memories of Dragon where they would be like, fine, we got some shit. And he's like, no. Oh, did we <laughs> that didn't you? do fuck all to me. You mean the entirety of Frieza's fight like a Namek? Yeah, like where they would finally do something. And they'd be like, oh my god, we got Frieza. And then Frieza's like, all right, stop. And you, oh, thank god, Piccolo can kind of fight this guy a little bit. And Frieza's you know, no, I'm gonna transform it, and then he does, and I think he just gets out of the third form just because he's being a dick. For yeah, a... Th- at that point, he's just being a dick when he enters his third form. I think he enters final form yeah. specifically because Dende just keeps healing dudes, and then he just automatically kills Dende. Yeah, and he nukes Dende. Uh, it was great, and Jiren, because every time they got one step forward on Jiren, they got like six steps. So he was just. Yeah. Well, and that's what Dragon Ball's about. The fights. Your was cool as shit. Yeah, I can see that definitely. That's a it's a valid reason, I'd say. I or... wouldn't say that Dragon Ball has always been about cool fights, but I would say that probably since the Cell Saga started, that's about all it's been. Sometimes it was about accidentally showing your vagina to an old man, and that was when it yeah. was best. Mm-hmm. That was when it was pure. Or pulling down a girl's shirt so that the old man would. Sp- Spray so much nose blood on the invisible man that he would be. Yes, or uh, that was just. I just realized that uh, the vagina. Bulma has shown her vagina accidentally to a lot of people. Yeah, it's it's not a secret. No, it's not a secret at all. That's why we love it. All right, thank you for the question. Next one comes from uh, L X N Ningen. And he asked, how exactly does one escape the Grand Tour? And do you think Dokkan should make these EZA raids harder as content for stronger teams, players, and more so go to the stones? Or leave them easy and rewards more so players can get the rewards easier? Um, for the first question, there's no real escaping until they stop releasing GT units. Yeah, you just suffer through it. You just suffer through it. And in terms for the second one... Um, if you're gonna make me fight someone a hundred times to get some dudes, to get some Elder Kai that are like 30% awakening, just make them easy. I don't care. <laughs> like, maybe if the easy game was 10, yeah, make them harder. But if I'm gonna have to fight this fucker a hundred times, no. Make him as easy as possible. Well, I think, I think there's a good middle ground you can find where you leave them as until you get to level 31, and then you actually put rewards after 31. Because for some reason, there's like, oh, you did all 30? All right, go fuck yourself. You're not getting anywhere. Uh, and I think there's actually some value in... Good rewards that. after the fact? Yeah, in, in making them still be... Re- even if you're not actively playing. Yeah. Or that's... like you're not, you know, actively awakening the unit. If you j- just throw some stones or something in there for people, you know? Give them something to work for or care about. Yeah, it could definitely work out, I think. Uh, it goes one or two ways. I just feel like for the grind specifically, if it's if it's four grinds of things that I need, then it should be not easy. But again, it, it depends on how many levels you're making me do. For the Omega Raid, it's 100 things to get all the good things before they start giving you Hercule stuff. So, I just don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't think they should make the medals um, harder to get. Yeah, no. I just think after you're done doing all that stuff, they should also let you get other shit. Yeah. Like more stones or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. I feel like. Because after the 100, they goes back to the classic, like, here's a Hercules statue, I think. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you for the question. And this is, uh, I believe, the last question because my... Uh... Yeah, this is the last question. Um, he, This is from Matt, hashtag Sobblegang, and he asks... Why did they make these two such good boys? And it's a whooper and a sobble. And the answer is, because water's pretty cool. Yep. Water's real nice. Stay hydrated. Stay hydrated, everyone. And with that, I want to thank you all for joining us for another episode of To Be Released. My laptop is literally dying on me. (laughs) Bye, everybody. Bye!